Hey guys, it's Mike from Retro Game Boys. So I wanted to give you a newly updated video on my Atari 5200 arcade stick and let you know some of the progress I made, some of the changes. So this video is going to replace uh, the other videos on my channel as well as uh, be embedded in the products page. So the first thing I want to make mention is that you can choose different color schemes and the color scheme basically is the knob, the buttons, and the bezel for the keypad. And you can get that in black, red, or white, or blue. And you can mix and match if you want. You can send a note to tell me if you wanted different colors. That'll be fine. This is based on availability, of course. Uh, the buttons are solid or LED. Again, the LED is based on availability. Um, but basically, you can mix and match. But if you choose a color scheme from the list, such as red, solid red, LED red, um, or uh, solid white, LED white, etc. I will make basically all of this the same color scheme. Okay, so keep that in mind. You have a choice of colors. Most people just stick with one color scheme um, and they just basically have the knobs and the buttons and the bezel all matched together. Okay, so that's that. Uh, the other thing I wanna make mention is, let me just push this stuff out of the way. I'm gonna edit this video also to give you a full demonstration. So this is uh, the arcade stick. And uh, some of the improvements that I made as I asked the community about um, eliminating the side button as well as the uh, DB15 port. Uh, and the reason for that is everybody who purchased one of these um, has always chose the keypad, which I originally made it as an option. I thought I could reduce the cost and uh, allow people to use their own Atari 5200 OEM joystick to plug in the side and use that keypad. but. Apparently, either those aren't working or the ones that do work, people want to keep them as collector's items, so they all opted for a new keypad, which makes sense to me. So uh, I eliminated the DB15 port and the start button on the side because there's no need for that any longer because the A button is the start button. Um, so that being said, the keypad now is integrated directly into the arcade stick. We still have the T notches here. Basically, if you choose a right or left stick orientation, that basically uh, will denote the location of the keypad. So in other words, the keypad will always go in front of um, the uh, buttons area like that. So I've designed this in a, in a modular way where I can print uh, a series of parts where I don't have to say, okay, this is a right, so print the right part. This is a left, so print the left part. So in this case, I print a universal base that's got a uh, left and right T-notch on the back. Um, and I print a, a universal keypad bezel that's either got a hole on the right or the left. And I even got a nice little 3D printed cap that I cap if we're not using that side. Uh, so the only thing I have to print for the orientation is uh, the cover uh, for the joystick and the buttons. Now people say, well, why don't you just flip it? Well, you could, but then the button orientation wouldn't be right. I always like the first button to be a little bit lower than the top buttons. When you're playing, it's kind of like this. People have done that in the past. People have flipped it, um, but I give that as an option uh, to basically uh, choose the stick orientation, either right or left. A uh, little note on the stick orientation. So this is more like fight stick style, uh, Street Fighter style, if you will. I'm a right-handed person, but I am very comfortable using the stick on the left and the buttons on the right, okay? But some people, they think of the Atari 2600 joystick where you had the button on the left and then the joystick on the right and some people are comfortable playing that way. So I give you an option for that as well. Um, you have the keypad here, which is fully integrated to control Atari 5200 keypad functionality, action one, action two, eight way directional joystick, and then these knobs here. Now these knobs are trim controls for horizontal and vertical directions. And I'll give a demonstration of that in a moment. So basically with the original Atari 5200 joystick, it was analog where it actually used variable resistors for horizontal and vertical movements. So there was actually a, a piece in there that went you know, left and right or up and down, basically controlling the uh, directional. Well, this is a micro switch that uh, basically you know, controls the movement, but in order to perform the auto centering for the, the way the technology is in the Atari 5200, we have these vertical trim knobs and you'll see a demonstration of that as well. Uh, but the nice uh, little side effect of, of doing it this way is you could use these for paddle games. So pretty much a, a lot of games can be played with the Atari 5200 uh, uh, arcade stick, except uh, games that require true analog control. So certain games like, uh, 
Uh, Missile Command, for example, will just basically move the cursor very quickly. And you'll see that as I use that for a calibration example in the demo. Um, and other games that basically require true analog control won't work, but I've sold a number of these. There's been a number of reviews on them. Uh, people have been very happy with them thus far, so uh, there shouldn't be any concerns about that. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to set up the tripod and I'm going to give you a brief demonstration. Okay, so I got my Atari 5200 set up, and this is a modded one. It actually has a power mod uh, where it's got the power adapter integrated and uh, as well as the uh, AV mod on it. So it's hooked up to uh, composite video. So I always start off the demonstration with uh, Missile Command strictly for cal calibration purposes, just to kind of show you um, the calibration of the cursor and the left and right directional movements. So again, LED lights when available, here's your keypad, and I'll do my best to use this because I don't really have the proper setup where I can put this on a tabletop, but this is, fits comfortably on your lap um, and you can use it that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the game, make sure the volume is not too high, and you're gonna notice the cursor. So a great way to calibrate this, the cursor will be on the screen. So when I press start, you can see the cursor's right over there. So a good way to calibrate is move to the right, left, up, and down and then you can then trim the control such as touching the horizontal knob and the vertical knob until it's about the center of the screen and this will work for most games now there is some sort of auto centering algorithm possibly I think every time you put a new game in you might have to make little uh, adjustments if you get some wandering movement of a character moving left or right or up and down that's where you would make these fine, uh, fine tuning of these knobs okay so that's basically all I do for calibration purposes now I'm just going to switch out the game and just throw in a two button game for you. And this is a Hero. Okay, so now we have Hero. Now you have full keypad functionality. A is start, uh, I believe B is pause, C is reset. Now keep in mind, pause is not available on every game. Um, so if you think that it's not working, it's not because of the keypad, it's because that game just did not work with pause, for example. I don't recall which ones uh, work and which ones don't have pause functionality. Uh, D does nothing. So if I wanted to just start at level two, you can see two, three, four, five, and that's, that's basically it. Uh, I could start the game, I'll just start at level one. And I'm gonna hold it like this, but now you can see the character fires and moves left and right drops the bomb. Okay, so you pretty much get the point. Now I'm gonna try another game just to show you a little bit more precision. And this is Montezuma's Revenge. One of my favorite games growing up. I played this actually first on the Commodore 64. You have nice fluid movements. Good reaction time. Oh, I fell. Okay, so anyway, that is just Montezuma's Revenge. Now, if you haven't already, I definitely recommend picking up an Atari Max SD Ultimate cart uh, or multi-cart. Uh, it doesn't come with ROMs, you'll have to find those, but it's a great way to have the Atari 5200 library on your system. So here I can go to 32K ROMs and then select the game. Now keep in mind, not every game works with this. Not every game even works with the original OEM controllers. There are certain games like Jumpman Jr., for example, which is a conversion for the Atari 800. I still haven't figured out um, how to start that. Just to give you a quick example, it doesn't have any functionality from the keypad and the buttons. So I don't know if there's another solution to this or not. If somebody on the internet knows, you know, please let me know. But I couldn't even get it to work with the original Atari 5200. Um, possibly maybe, you know, emulators and keyboards. So here's Choplifter. Now the reason I'm showing you Choplifter is just some of the fine tune controls that you might witness. So I'm going to start the game. OK, 
Okay, so pretty much this has been configured perfectly. So you get your fire, and you get your turn. Okay, so if you ever notice a character, for example, you know, wandering all the way up, you just need to adjust the vertical, and then you'll notice there's left, and there's right. Okay, so this is just where, you know, you might need to make fine tune adjustments depending on uh, the game to get things to work. Again, like I said, this is just a newer model, new design. I've sold a number of these and everybody's been very, very happy with it. Okay, I guess that's it. Um, I guess I could show you one more. Okay, yep, this is a good example here. If you ever hear this in the Ultimate SD cart, that's again, just the vertical and horizontal movements of the menu bar. So if you ever hear, you just have to adjust the knob accordingly. Let's go to Kaboom. So Kaboom is a paddle game. Okay, so just one player. And then you can see here, I could actually play paddle games with it. Okay, so that's it guys. If you have any questions, just post them where this video is posted or contact me on my page. Uh, I'm very responsive. You can read product reviews and see what people have been saying about it. I'm happy to be of service. I believe in uh, immediate communication and uh, producing a high quality product. Basically, I like to treat people the way, you know, I would want to be treated in the sense that, you know, when I would purchase a product, expect a certain level of customer service, communication, uh, and friendliness. Okay, that's all I have. I appreciate your time, guys. I hope to hear from you. Take care.